done some significant advances in diagnosis. Uh, specifically, one of the things that uh, we covered was the changes from the DSM-4 to the DSM-5. The DSM-4 criteria uh, wouldn't allow a clinician to be able to definitively make the diagnosis in many cases. And the reason why is because one of the criterion was that you had to find the psychological factor that was associated with the onset of the symptom. And one of the things as busy clinicians that we might find is that when you're down in the emergency room uh, or in the accident room, or when you're doing the 30 minute consult at bedside, um, or even in a brief outpatient encounter, the patient doesn't know you well enough yet. And there might not be enough of a, a diagnostic rapport, a therapeutic uh, uh, engagement that the patient trusts you to be able to share all of the things that might have happened. And that's not to say everybody has this um, history um, of trauma or abuse, but many times there's something there. We've all got life events that occur. And so those many times might be overlooked or not shared in a brief encounter. And so thereby that created uh, this effect of, I think that this is conversion disorder, but I didn't hear some type of a psychologically relevant event uh, in that time, the brief time that I had with the patient. So what we did is we relegated that to a note. It's still important. And we realized that there are a number of people who have life events that occur. Um, but now as a note, uh, we have allowed for the understanding that that may come out over time with discussion uh, and uh, and rapport. The other thing that we did uh, with DSM-5 is that uh, we talked about the incongruence and inconsistencies between exam findings and neuroanatomical and neuropathophysiologic processes. So in effect, now we're using the exam to help rule in the diagnosis. So now clinicians don't have to hedge they don't have to say possibly, maybe, rule out. Now they can say, I've got a history, I've got an exam, I've done the appropriate workup with the appropriate labs, enough but not too much, and then um, I can put that together and make a positive diagnosis. And then I can share it with a patient in a positive, non-judgmental, non-pejorative manner that actually gives direction for what happens next, which is treatment.